welcome. I want to welcome all of you to today's webinar. September is National Preparedness Month. So today's webinar, we will introduce you to the resources that are available from the Extension Disaster Education Network, EDEN, to help you teach others about family preparedness. Now, first of all, let me clarify, this is truly a train the trainer session. It's not the direct training. So I'm assuming all of you who are on want to learn about this so you can share it with others. And that's truly what it's designed for. So welcome to this train the trainer session. Couple of housekeeping things. If it isn't already that way on your screen, you can play around with the PowerPoint on your own screen to make it bigger. Scott, just our technical support, thank you, Scott, just turned or just muted everybody else. So we'll do one way audio throughout just so we have fewer technical difficulties. But please, 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 as we go, if you have a comment or a question, please go ahead and type it into the chat box while you're thinking of it instead of thinking, well, I'll wait till later because if you're like me, you'll forget it by then. So um, also feel free to adjust your volume, whether you do that on your computer, your speaker, your headset, whatever. Hopefully everybody can hear you, hear me rather. Let's do a quick check. Below the list of names, you'll see a check mark and an X. If you can hear me okay, please just click on the check. If you cannot hear me, click on the X. Okay, it looks like we're in pretty good shape. Just wanted to do that test. I think Everybody has already put their email address in the box. And just to warn you, we are recording this. So others who aren't able to join us live can watch it later. Any questions about the technicalities here? Okay, let's roll. The first thing I'd like to do is share with you who will be presenting today. Like I said, my name is Becky Koch. I'm the Director of Ag Communication at North Dakota State. You'll also hear from Carolyn Washburn, who is a Family and Consumer Sciences agent in Washburn County in Utah with Utah State University. We'll also hear from Connie Wheeler, who is a Family and Consumer Sciences Extension Associate with the University of Kentucky. Lynette Black with Oregon State 4-H Youth Development Faculty in Wasco County, and Sarah Kirby, who's a housing specialist with North Carolina Cooperative Extension at North Carolina State University. So let me share quickly what we'll be doing here in the next hour. First of all, I'd like to introduce you a little bit to EDEN, the Extension Disaster Education Network share with you the variety of courses that are available for you to use through EDEN, and obviously we want to focus on the family preparedness course material. Then several of the folks who are on today will share with you how they've used the family preparedness materials to carry out training and what they've learned through those experiences. And then finally, we want some feedback from you. How might you use these resources? How might you teach the Family Preparedness course? What other resources would you like to see with Family and Consumer Sciences for disaster preparedness, response, or recovery? So first of all, the Extension Disaster Network, I forgot a word, Extension Disaster Education Network, EDEN, I would appreciate it if you would go to your polling one more time. If you've heard of Eden, please check if you've never heard of Eden, the X box, or the X rather. All right, that's what I like to see. Thank you. So we won't spend much time on this. But obviously the mission of Eden is to share educational resources to reduce the impact of natural and man-made disasters. And instead of it, each of us reinventing the wheel on things like family preparedness training, here's a perfect example of how we can make one version so each of us doesn't have to do the prep work, but we can all use those resources. We're really pleased to say that institutions from the 1862 schools and the 1890 schools 
in all 50 states plus three ter territories are now members of the Extension Disaster Education Network. And when we did a review with what was then CSREES, now NIPA, they just didn't know what to call Eden. Is it a program? Is it a this? Is it a that? And it truly is a network. There's not a lot of requirements, just how can we share amongst ourselves and not, like I said, reinvent the wheel. Eden is focusing a little bit more in program areas, kind of like other organizations are moving away from physical regions in many cases, because with technology, we can share more with people we have in common, uh, subjects we have in common. So Eden worked a lot on agriculture and natural resources already, but this Family and Consumer Sciences Program Area Work Group POG, have to have an acronym of course, uh, was formed to focus on and develop resources related to family and consumer sciences, such as housing, foods and nutrition, family economics, human development. So this group's goal, of which everybody who's presenting today is a member, is to provide and or develop, if there's a need, family and consumer sciences educational resources related to disaster preparedness and recovery that extension educators and others around the country can use. Since so many of you are familiar with Eden, I hope you know about the Eden website, eden.lsu.edu. I'm getting a little bit of feedback, Scott. Is everybody else? I took it off. Okay, I think. Thank you. Um, and, and, and just a little trivia in case you're wondering, you can no longer have a .edu without a university affiliation, and since the Eden website is at LSU, we had to do that, but we very strongly felt it should not be .com or even .org, or, and that's before there was .info and everything like that. So we wanted to make sure Eden was stressed as being educational resources. This is a screenshot of the Eden website. I'd like to just walk you through it very quickly. You'll notice at the very top right, there's obviously a search, but below that, there's state information where you can go to any state and see who the delegates are from those institutions. News and features right there at the very top of the list is our family preparedness training, just letting people know this is happening. You'll see topics, which are a variety of things, flood, mold, snow, avian influenza, a variety of topics there that have more in-depth information. Resources, um, which again, I encourage you to just go explore. The Eden courses we'll look at here in a minute. Conferences and workshops and about Eden are a little bit more internal, but I would encourage you to look and see what's there. Since both halves of the web page home site wouldn't fit, here's the bottom half. So there's our family preparedness course right in the middle that is a focus on the home page. Learning opportunities, a link over on the left bottom to e-extension because Eden was one of the original pioneer communities of practice. So right now we have agro-security and floods and avian influenza live. And here's my plug, if anyone would like to join us in creating the Family Preparedness e-extension resources, we'd love to have you join. You'll also see FAQs and articles related to Eden topics, disaster topics that are on e-extension. So a cooperative effort there. But obviously what we're going to focus on today is the Family Preparedness course, so I want to let you know about the other courses that are available too. And once we get into Family Preparedness, you'll see what resources are included in a course. So the other courses that are now available through Eden include agro, excuse me, animal agro-security and emergency management. Of course, 
family preparedness there on protection and defense, which is an interesting consumer angle to food protection, pandemic influenza preparedness for faith-based organizations. Research shows that a lot of people will get involved in things like preparedness through their faith-based organization. And obviously that was created when pandemic influenza was a hotter topic, and that one's in the process of being updated right now. Pandemic preparedness for businesses. Obviously, businesses can't function if a lot of their staff are homesick during a pandemic or caring for sick loved ones. Plant biosecurity management. That one's been updated recently, too, and obviously is more geared towards our agricultural friends. And ready business, which we cooperated with ready.gov at DHS to develop that material for your training options. Now I'd like to introduce Carolyn, Carolyn Washburn with the Utah State University in Wash Washington County, who's a family and consumer sciences agent. Carolyn was instrumental in developing this course, and I'd like her to share with you what some of the content is. Again, if you haven't had a chance to type your email address into the chat box, please do that. And if you have any questions or comments as we go, please type those in too. So Carolyn, take it away. Happy to be here with you today. I became involved with emergency preparedness when my county experienced a flooding disaster and Homeland Security moved into my office and conference room. It was really interesting to watch the process and I realized how little information Extension had ready to give out to constituents. So following this experience, I began gathering and putting together courses and materials to better prepare communities and families. I think it's very important to help families mitigate their loss and also their fear. The Family Preparedness Program that we're really sharing with you today is a national team effort. We started with a nationwide request for land-grant institutions to send their disaster materials and then we began to combine and prepare a generic emergency preparedness course for families. Many states provided materials, and they were combined with disaster education materials from other states until they were refined, and now this is what makes up the Eden Family Preparedness Course. This five-module course can be a complete program used in a one-time setting, or each section can be used independently in a shorter session, whatever meets your needs. Each Eden course, like Family Preparedness, includes a course introduction page, like the one that you're seeing here, uh, that describes the course. Also, uh, as you enter any of the EDEN programs, we would encourage you to be sure to use the tracker and sign in that you find in the left-hand corner. This is so that if materials are updated or changed, you can be notified, and also helps us know who's using the materials. Each of these five modules have excellent information and resources that will help you have successful training materials and classes. This program also provides you with ready-made materials to help you publicize your class, and they are very easy for you to customize your contact material and information. Another excellent resource uh, that's with the Eden course is the fact that there are news releases that are already prepared and ready for you just to submit to news agencies. And these, these releases provide information about the classes, what you will be presenting. Oftentimes, as presenters, we do a great job of presenting, but we run out of time and we don't take the time to uh, effectively advertise. And so here it is complete for you. These five modules each consist of leader guides and downloadable PowerPoints. Handouts are also available for each of the subjects and uh, are made for you with the Eden Logan logo on the left-hand side and then the right-hand side on the, the handouts are left empty so that you can personalize your own institution or organization. 
The PowerPoints are narrated online for your review or for other people to learn on their own. Additional resources and online evaluations and report forms are also on the course materials page. Here is what the actual course materials page looks like. The Family Preparedness Program first provides a course overview that helps you prepare to teach family preparedness. Then there's a leader guide and PowerPoints for these five modules. The five modules are Introduction and Why Prepare, an overview of the need for teaching preparedness and getting people involved. The second module of Get a Kit provides instructions on preparing a 72 to 96 hour emergency kit. We know that each of us need to be self-sustainable for the first 96 hours before help may arrive to uh, give us the needs. Our third module of Make a Plan uh, includes how to connect family members and even ideas for evacuations. The fourth of Be Informed and Get Involved uh, this module encourages citizens to help others prepare and even realize the opportunities out in the community for you to be involved with. The last module of possible disasters uh, is an easy module that you can modify for your own needs. In this one, you can highlight the disasters that will most likely affect your area, although it's important that all uh, viewers have some idea of disasters. Here you can add additional slides if you need more in-depth information, or you can delete slides if you don't feel you want to spend time on it at all. Each of these modules reinforce Homeland Security and Red, the American Red Cross theme of get a kit, make a plan, and be informed. For take-home information, fact sheets on several topics are supplied and more are being added to the website. So you may pick and choose which fact sheets are most important for your audience. Uh, a few examples of these are making an emergency supply list, child preparedness, a fact sheet on pet preparedness. Uh, with over 70% of Americans having pets, it's critical that we remind families to make a plan for their animals. Most families will not leave their animals behind, and this fact sheet helps give a little information on on building kits or making plans for animals. A fact sheet on earthquakes. Most American cities are built along major fault lines and earthquake information may be very important to those you serve. A fact sheet on floods. That's America's number one national disaster and so we probably all will be using it at some time. And tornadoes, biological and chemical terrorism. These are just a few that have been put online. So to help even the most novice disaster educator, a complete leader guide is provided. You can see above here that the overview provides an introduction to you, the trainer, and helps to prepare for teaching family preparedness. This introduction also provides you with additional resources and ways to network in your community and credit for the course. The leader guide for each module provides you with a draft script for each slide with detailed information and then also provides links where you can obtain additional information if you feel this isn't enough for you. The PowerPoint slides offer bullets for very easy reading, color photos to keep attention, and better understanding because often visuals will trigger a thought or idea that sometimes the speaking won't. Some slides even offer a family activity that you may want to select. Uh, suggest to your attendees. For example, on this slide, uh, it suggests a gathering experience for family members. Each family member is given a pillowcase and told that they have seven minutes to gather anything they would need to survive for the next three days. And when they return, each family member begins to share what they have in their uh, pillowcase and begin to realize what it takes for survival and that maybe they didn't get the best things they should have. But similar activities and ideas are listed on other modules. Today, we're just simply introducing you to these resources to help you teach family preparedness. This program has been completed with the total family in mind. That means you will be providing information on children, family pets, 
seniors, it may even be information to individuals with disabilities. So use the parts that fit your needs and remember that it's very easy to customize for your area or your audience. Now I'd like to introduce you to Sarah Kirby. Sarah is a housing specialist from North Carolina State University County Extension and uh, she will share other resources that are included in the Family Preparedness Program. Thanks, Carolyn. I appreciate that. Um, we're going to continue our tour through the Family Disaster Preparedness course, and we'll find some other items that I think will be extremely useful to you as you work with your constituents and as you um, provide training. Um, Carolyn mentioned a bit earlier about the disaster fact sheets, and there are a number of disaster fact sheets on a wide variety of topics. Um, they are available in Word so that you can edit them, and you can add any necessary localization and also insert your logo of your organization on these fact sheets, which is really nice because a lot of times our clients want to see things that they know are from either our institution or a particular organization. It makes a difference. Here in North Carolina, they'd rather see things from North Carolina than, say, California, just because they think it then applies to them. So it's really nice to have this ability to customize. Um, most of the fact sheets are designed so that the front of the fact sheet includes information about the specific type of disaster, for example, in this case, flood. And then on the other side of the fact sheet, you'll find suggestions on how to prepare for that specific disaster. And then, of course, in addition to the fact sheets related to specific disasters, such as tsunami, floods, earthquakes, um, there are also fact sheets that Carolyn mentioned on disaster preparedness topics, such as emergency supply kits. Um, child em uh, emergency prepar uh, preparation, prep prep pet preparation, excuse me, the peas are getting to me, and of course first aid supplies. So those are all available. Carolyn highlighted the PowerPoint for each of the mod modules earlier too, but in addition to the PowerPoint with notes for presenters, um, the course also includes narrated PowerPoints. And these are particularly helpful to you in a number of ways. First, for those individual leaders who are uncomfortable with presenting information, it gives them an option of having the information presented for them so they can actually show the PowerPoint. Secondly, as educators, we know that it's often difficult to reach audiences. People have very busy lives and they need to be able to access information at a place and time that's convenient to them. So the narrated PowerPoints allow us to provide real-time learning so people can come and watch when they've got the time to do so. And then finally, um, if educators are aware that a potential, um, that community members may be in danger of an impending disaster, such as a hurricane, they can actually point community members to the website to go to these narrated PowerPoints so that they can begin learning how to prepare for that specific disaster. And then all they really have to do is point, click, and listen. So it's, a, it's another option. And also, when we get a little later, we'll talk about some options for using these PowerPoints, perhaps on government access channels or some other places where they may be convenient. Um, in addition to the materials that are part of the five modules in the course, there are also some additional resource materials that are listed that can enhance both the teaching of the course as well as the activities and information that the participants receive. Um, one of them is from the University of Missouri Extension, and it is the Family Disaster Plan. And this leads individuals to create an electronic family disaster plan. It also includes specific information for children, for pets, and for household employees. The second one um, listed is the Insurance Information Institute Know Your Home, Know Your Stuff home inventory, and this particular inventory stresses the importance and the process of taking a household inventory and of keeping a household inventory up to date. A lot of times we find our inventory isn't up to date until we actually have a disaster, so the idea is to keep it up to date as you go along. The site also allows people to upload a free home inventory that can be accessed anywhere, which is extremely important because we know that disasters often result in displacement of people and of items, so if you're no longer in your home and you're computer's been flooded, you can still access your inventory from another location. Uh, the FEMA Ready America um, site provides a variety of information that's related to disaster preparedness. It focuses, again, on getting a kit, making plans, and being prepared for a variety of disasters. It also includes preparedness tips for a variety of audiences, as well as some specific geographical locations. 
And then finally, the American Red Cross Be Ready, Be Red Cross Ready, also emphasizes getting a kit, making a plan, as well as being informed. And this site, too, includes both audio and visual um, materials. And then all of these really can enhance and supplement the instruction in the five modules of the Family Preparedness course. And finally, after your course is complete, there are a couple of things you want to be aware of. One is that you may choose to provide certificates of completion to your participants. Like the fact sheets, the certificate is completely customizable with your organization's logo, the instructor's name, the date, and recognition for the individual who actually completed the course. And then once the course is complete, there's also an opportunity for students as well as instructors to provide some evaluative feedback. There are two different instruments, one for students, and the students are asked to rate the content to share two things they've learned from the course, um, to share some steps they're going to take as a result of what they learn, and then also to provide some recommendations for improving the course. And then the other um, instrument is for instructors, and they're actually asked to provide a brief summary of how they taught the course, um, some comments perhaps that their participants have made, and again, some suggestions for improving the course. Now, both of these instruments are online, and Eden uses the eExtension Instant Survey System. So if you want to um, get the information from your particular students, you can contact North Dakota State University at any time and request the data from your um, participants, which can be very handy. I shared a little bit about the course and the various components that make up the Family Preparedness course. So now we thought we'd take a little bit of time to hear from some Extension educators who can share how they've taught the Family Preparedness course. And our first presenter will be Connie Wheeler. And Connie is a Family and Consumer Science Extension Associate from the University of Kentucky. So we look forward to hearing your experience with Connie. Thank you, Sarah. In Kentucky, we've had a variety of extension agents who have used uh, family preparedness programs uh, with various audiences in various ways. We've taught in classroom situations. Uh, sometimes these have been taught in one session and sometimes the five modules in a series of sessions. We've shared with community, civic, um, and uh, community service clubs. We've used them with extension homemaker leaders and, and members. Some counties have used the narrated PowerPoints with their local cable television stations, and these have run on the, uh, the local networks. And some counties have even used them as one-on-one uh, -on -one in instruction in the extension office or at uh, community uh, fairs and um, displays and in the community. We found that it helps during promotion and marketing of the programs to partner with some other groups. Use the members and the networks of your local churches uh, and other faith-based organizations volunteer fire departments, the local emergency managers, your local schools, uh, to help you publicize the program. It is always good to include someone from your local newspaper on your planning committee. Not only will they give you some needed promotion and often free publicity, but they may even write up your program as a feature story either prior to or after the program. Use local speakers um, from groups in your community. Include someone from the Red Cross, for example, um, as a follow-up program. If you have a um, local emergency situation, include stories from those who've been affected and let them say how being prepared helped them or could have helped them with the eventual outcome. During the actual um, delivery of the program, let your participants share a few stories at the beginning of the training. This will help the group feel more comfortable with each other and with the subject matter. But let me warn you here, sometimes stories can get out of hand. Uh, make sure that, you, um, uh, that, that your audience 
realizes that you only have time for two or three stories, once this gets started, everyone will want to tell a story that can take up more time than, uh, than you might have available. You might have some real life samples of supply kit items there in, in your room and um, tubs, five gallon buckets, or other ways to store uh, your emergency supplies. It helps to have these available for people to look at and touch and pick up and feel. Have a sample of a communication plan for the participants to look at. You can try giving away some of the um, emergency items for incentives to uh, attend the program. You or a committee member can often get flashlights, emergency radios, first aid kits, storage boxes, pull top food cans, or other items donated. If you're doing a multi-session program, be sure to give the incentives only those to those who have attended all the sessions and during the last session. It's important to use the materials with all the audiences in your community. Uh, who are some of these special audiences? Well, first of all, we all have the elderly and the handicapped in our community. Take into consideration both physical and mental uh, requirements of these populations. Do you work with senior citizen centers or do you have a large senior population among your clientele? Preparing makes sense for older Americans. Do you have pets? You need to plan what uh, you will do with your pets during an emergency. Will you take them with you to a shelter or will you board your pets at a kennel in a safe place? These decisions need to be made and planned for in case of an emergency. And often they need to be uh, planned for well ahead of time. Babies and young children need specific items that other family members may not need. They have to have special food. They need special clothing and uh, special hygiene items for these audiences. Do you know other special audiences? I'd like you to take a couple of minutes and type into the, um, the text chat box some other special audience groups that uh, you may have worked with or you may um, have realized need, that you need to work with in, on this subject. College students, that's a really good one there. Renters, you don't often see those uh, as a special audience, but they certainly are because many times renters um, don't have um, access or don't have um, uh, a lot of items that they can use for supply kits. All right, if any any of you uh, think of any others, just add them uh, in there to the text chat. FEMA has some, um, some great resources that we can use with special audiences. They have a website at ready.gov where uh, you can find materials. The FEMA materials are available in several formats. Many of the materials are available also as downloadable handouts. There are many that are available for special audiences, uh, such as military families, families with new babies, elderly, handicapped, families with pets. Some of these are also available as uh, printed brochures. They're nice, they're colorful. The picture here is, is a quadrifold brochure of general information about emergency preparedness. 
It's also available from FEMA in a 16-page booklet form. Both of these plus other brochures and handouts are available in both English and Spanish. There's an order form and a toll-free number for ordering these free materials at ready.gov. Uh, you need to know, however, that you need to allow up to six weeks uh, for free delivery. The next person to share today is Lynette Black. Lynette is a 4-H youth development faculty member with Oregon State University in Wasco County, Oregon. Good afternoon, everyone, from the beautiful state of Oregon and the host location of this year's Eden Conference. Um, feel free to contact the visit either contact me or visit the Eden website for more information on the conference. There's still room available, and, and uh, if you'd like to come visit us, we'd love to have you part of our conference. Um, similar to Connie, I've given several presentations for specific adult groups, such as senior citizens or community organizations. I found that generally when invited to present, the time allotted is not enough to share all the information in the family preparedness presentation. A nice thing about the way we've put this program together, though, is that it's easy to pick and choose educational segments. The focus I may take depends on several factors, such as the time of the year, current events, and, of course, the people re re requesting the presentation. Um, just last week, I was invited to present to the seniors at our local senior center, and this is an annual event scheduled every September during National Preparedness Month. Uh, this time, we did a quick review on the survival kit and then focused mainly on developing a communication plan. Again, depending on the organization requesting the presentation, I may focus more on pet preparedness, especially a big uh, request when it's 4-H. Wildfire evacuation kits, since we just had the wildfire events around us. Developing kits for children. And as a 4-H agent, some of my special audiences will include camp counselors. Camp counselors being prepared for an emergency um, it, if it should occur during camp. And, and other 4-H agents. So 4-H uh, agents are great ones for being able to also teach this presentation. I also teach the entire three-hour presentation for community members as an extension service program. My goal is to teach the entire lesson at least once a year, usually during September, the National Preparedness Month. However, since I'm a 4-H uh, youth development educator, my focus is on empowering youth to teach the program. In the true 4-H fashion, my evaluations have indicated that when we train youth in preparedness, we reach, we reach their family also. Our trained 4-H youth have taught preparedness to 4-H leaders at state and regional leaders forums, to other 4-H youth at state and national conferences, and as invited guests for 4-H clubs. They've also given presentations to the local school board and community organizations. 4-H youth have used this training to help their communities through community service projects as well. One club created pet preparedness kits for pet owners. Combined, um, they've, other cl clubs have combined them with their geospatial projects with emergency preparedness and created evacuation maps or shelter maps and other things that could be used to help their um, communities. Outside of 4-H, I've taught the program to high school youth in school or in after school settings. In one particular case, high school youth use the knowledge gained to develop survival kits for every classroom in their school and then taught the teachers and other students how to develop kits for their home, for work, and for their automobiles. A few lessons I've learned regarding youth and disaster preparedness, however, is one, it can be challenging to reach and interest youth in emergency preparedness. It requires creative, interest-grabbing techniques. But once that interest is caught, youth take the lesson seriously and are apt to develop community service projects as a way of helping their community prepare for disasters. And through the emergency preparedness method, or I should say, though the emergency preparedness message often falls on deaf ears, 
youth are oftentimes able to open those ears and affect learning and change. Youth are powerful motivators for adults. Now, Carolyn Washburn from Utah State will share how she has taught family preparedness courses. Utah has been involved in many family preparedness uh, training days. We often do them as Saturday events and invite the total family to participate, uh, doing a section for children where they'll build their own 72-hour uh, kits while parents attend classes, then bringing the families back together to provide an emergency lunch meal. We also just finished uh, a booth at our state fair where we handed out many of the new uh, Eden resources. It was it was great to see how anxious many of our people were to receive our new earthquake preparedness, and uh, this was a great opportunity for our university. Other classes uh, Utah has held have often been just one-time section classes, and they could even be provided to uh, special interest groups such as seniors or to individuals with handicaps that have a real need to understand how to bake, make a basic preparedness kit and to find some comfort in knowing that they have some preparedness. Each of these modules offers a complete program that has proven very effective to useful attend to Utah attendees. These materials have been used with our local county emergency teams, uh, to county health officials, to medical teams, and to CERT uh, teams. As you can see here, we have a CERT volunteer, and they network with us a lot. Happy for us to come in and teach some, some of the sections to their people. Many of the committee members use these courses to help provide information to others they work with. Many church organizations have invited us to provide training using these resources. It's an excellent resource to teach agencies about Eden services. And if any of you happen to be going out to the NEAFCS National Conference, be sure and visit the Eden booth and maybe even attend the, the Eden workshop that's going to talk more about the Family Preparedness Program. And now we're back to Sarah. She's from North Carolina, and she's going to share with you how she has used this program. Thanks again, Carolyn. Um, my experiences are somewhat similar to everybody else's, with the exception that I, I do um, in-service training for our agents as well. And those they're not just family and consumer science agents, but they can also be agents in um, agriculture, 4-H, as well as uh, community and rural development. So family preparedness is important for everyone to know in um, cooperative extension, and our agents certainly have been a recipient of that. Also, our Extension and Community Association, which is our large volunteer organization with North Carolina State University, also the former um, Extension Homemakers. They have um, been recipients of family preparedness training um, and then finally, I would say that the work that we've done has really been important with our collaborative efforts. So we have worked with emergency management, like Carolyn was talking about, as well as the Red Cross, to present train-the-trainer kinds of um, uh, seminars. So it, it, it's good to cross-train with other organizations. I think collaborative efforts really help you reach a, a broader audience and also help you um, to be able to capitalize on the, the, the resources as well as the um, talents of other organizations and, and uh, agencies. So the one thing I would say in terms of this current family preparedness course is that it really is extremely useful for a number of reasons. And first is that the, the messages are consistent and they work uh, consistently across the country. Second, that they are customizable for your specific location. Um, they can be used to train both professionals as well as lay people. And they have really all the materials that you need to address preparedness needs. So I think that this particular course really um, serves a vital link um, for many people who are working in the family preparedness um, arena. I want to go back now and, and, and ask you all for your input again. Um, we've, talked, we've, we've talked about the course. We've talked about the components of the course. We've shared a little bit about how the course has been used in various states and with various, various audiences. And Connie's even asked you a little bit about some audiences that you might um, think about. But let's try again to see if there's any other thing you've thought of how you might use this family preparedness course with your organization or with your audience. Is there anything you've thought about 
um, since, since we presented this. Just take a moment and write it in the chat box, if you will. I don't know if anybody's typing or not, but I will say when we did this last week, we did have um, an agent uh, who suggested using it for um, government access channel. Tracy even said, looking at the information, using it in TV and radio programs, that would be excellent. One of the things they were talking about was showing the PowerPoints over and over though on the government access channel. Becky, motivating to share it with 4-H, absolutely. Um, youth have a, a, a big role to play in family preparedness. And the idea that if we really prepare youth for disasters, then it's less fearful for them as well. Cross-training master food preservation, that's an excellent idea, an excellent idea. Um, and one of the other suggestions from our previous uh, webinar was working with child care facilities. And I think Becky mentioned that many already have a plan, but this may be something that you could do not only working with the child care providers, but perhaps even the parents of those, of those children. So that's, that's an option. Anything else before we move on? Okay. I've got one more question for you before we end, and that is, are there any additional needs? We've talked about some of the components of this particular um, uh, course. Are there any additional needs that you have that need to be addressed in terms of topics in the family preparedness course? Tracy, I like your idea, too, about running the TV in your lobby and, and running the program information sort of over and over, looping it so that people see it. But any, any additional topics that we ought to cover in the family and consumer science? Information in Spanish, that's an excellent idea. I, it is not, um, but that's an excellent idea. Oh, preparedness or recovery, exactly, Becky. We can, this is a preparedness, we might address recovery as well. Any other thoughts? Obviously, we know that this is this is just a beginning, um, but an important beginning because being prepared certainly helps you um, in responding and recovering to disasters. So, um, we do hope that you have learned something valuable today. That the resources will be valuable to you as you work in your area of disaster preparedness, um, and we hope that you'll use the resources as you as you work with your organizations and constituencies, partners, and collaborators. Let's see. Oh, Karen, interesting, a family uh, preparedness bingo game that's fun and interactive. Uh, maybe you'll share that with us, and that may be something that we can add to our plan. FEMA publications are available in Spanish. You're correct, Connie, so that's one option as well. Kids going back to school that were uncomfortable. Very interesting, Becky. I'd love to see the bingo game too, Val. I think that would be a, a very interesting thing. And Lynette knows of a website that will make bingo cards for you at no charge. So there you go. I think that's a great idea, though, and a fun way to learn about disaster preparedness. Any other thoughts? Use them with youth, exactly. Learning needs to be fun. It does, Tracely, especially when you're talking about something that's kind of, kind of scary, especially if you're working with kids and youth. You know, um, an impending disaster it, it makes everybody a little bit nervous, but particularly when you don't have some sort of uh, concept of, of what a hurricane brings or flooding, or even if you do, especially if you're young and you've already been through it. So helping to make it fun and to take some of the fear out of it could be very helpful. Um, and Becky would like us all, again, to share our email addresses so that she can share things with you, um, and she'll make sure that, that these bingo cards and the, the information that we shared can get um, out to you all, so then you've got that. So please be sure to do that. Okay, well, I, I guess our time has come to an end. Um, we do thank you for taking some time and sharing your afternoon with us. And uh, we do particularly thank you for the important work that you guys do in preparing individuals for disasters. 
Sarah, this is Becky. This is Becky. I just want to remind people that if they missed the beginning or any part, we have recorded today's webinar. And as soon as Scott is able to do his magic and get it to me, I will try to get it up on the Eden website um, on the Family Preparedness course page. I think I can do that. I do have to run back to the Emergency Preparedness Expo for a little while, but I should have that done by tomorrow. So if you missed any part or want to go back and review sections of this or share it with your coworkers who might not have been available for today's webinar, we'll go ahead and put this recording on that Family Preparedness website on the Eden website. And Sarah already kind of wrapped it up, but I want to say thank you to this team. They've put a lot of effort into this and greatly appreciate it. Uh, yes, Karen, we will have the entire chat log. Um, I can certainly send that to you. I don't know if everybody wants to receive that, but we can have that available. If there's more discussion, it looks like we're on a roll with keying in now. So if you have any more thoughts or ideas to share, we don't mean to cut you off. We're actually done a little bit early here. If you need to go, you've certainly gotten the content, and thank you for joining us. But if you have additional ideas to share or questions, please go ahead and continue to type those in the chat box. Becky, I just got an email um, from Keyshawn Thomas, and um, not able to type into the um, chat box, but um, mentions working with or perhaps partnering with FFA. Has anybody out there partnered with FFA? She, uh, the regional office is in their campus, and um, the whole idea of getting youth involved is really a great idea, Keyshawn. I think that'd be great. Anybody? Has anybody done that? Great idea. I'm in the process of working with our local um, for a, or excuse me, FFA chapter with the Agro Security Program, which is another Eden program, but to work with Agro Security with them. I think that's great. I think sometimes in extension we think of 4-H of first because we're used to that, but um, FFA certainly is a, a, a great option. I don't see any more comments or questions coming in, so maybe we ought to just wrap it up. Again, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. We hope these resources are user-friendly for you that you don't have to invest a lot of time in preparedness work yourself to teach family preparedness, that you can just pick these up and roll with it, basically. And again, I want to thank the team that you heard from today for making that possible. So thank you for joining us, and we look forward to hearing from you with the online report for instructors on how you end up using the family preparedness resources. So thank you all very much for joining us today.